So I was meant to go to town today, but I really did not feel like leaving the house. Um, my skin, my skin is really, it's just getting to me a little bit today. So these little red spots that you can see all across my forehead, this big one, under, these big ones under my eyes. That's psoriasis. Um, you can see it starting to come all down my arms. So you can get a nice clean look at it there on my arms and on my stomach. So what is psoriasis? In short, it's a huge pain in my asshole. Basically, what it is from like a scientific um standpoint is it's an autoimmune disease so something has obviously happened recently whether it be like stress or anxiety or whatever it is that has sent my immune system into overdrive and that has triggered my psoriasis so i mean like what is it like why does it come up in like red flaky spots um essentially the skin is turning over seven times faster than the average person's skin should so by the time the new skin gets to the surface because it's being turned over so quickly it's very premature so that's why it's you get these like little red raw flaky spots so that's essentially what psoriasis is it's not contagious uh, you can't catch it you can't give it to anybody anything like that but it is hereditary so like oh i got it due to my gene pool um my dad's side of the family there to blame for my psoriasis um it's very itchy it's very uncomfortable if i don't moisturize particularly my face multiple times throughout the day it gets very painful because it feels like my face is too small for my head and um, if i raise my eyebrows or make any sort of facial expression that feels really tight on this sort of area so not only does it take its toll mentally because it doesn't look great it takes its toll physically because it's uncomfortable it's itchy and it's painful this is also not the worst of a had psoriasis so i had psoriasis a good few years ago maybe four ish years ago i had a real bad flare up and this is what it looked like so it can be way worse than what it is now and that's not to say that the way it is now doesn't get worse uh, there is a likely that it, there is a likelihood that it will get worse before it gets better um but because i've been through it before because i know um, and i know what sort of products have kind of worked for me before it's just a matter of just nursing it and hoping that it doesn't get any better and if it does just knowing that this is not the the be all end all that i will eventually kind of get better again but it's tough especially on days like today when it has its it you know it plays a toll on your mental health and you don't feel like leaving the house at all and not getting on with your life it's tough and I've had to take like product shots of the new products for the website, which is up now, by the way, if you want to go shop them, please do. I've had to go take them photographs with my skin looking like this, which is absolutely not ideal. But it is what it is. You know, we just have to kind of live with it, deal with it, and try not let it affect us too much mentally but it's tough I put a question box up on Instagram so let's do a Q&A Gareth Hansen says I've been wanting to reach out and ask for tips on dressing for a bigger guy so we cover this in our newsletter um, somewhat kind of extensively. So it should be in the archive of the newsletter and you'll only get access to that if you're a paid subscriber. I'll leave the link in the description below. Tips for bigger guys. 
my biggest tip for dressing if you're a bigger guy is proportions find your proportions if you're really broad in the shoulders and you're kind of small in the waist you don't want to wear skinny legs because then you're just going to look like a, a dorito you want to wear like a fuller cut leg something that's like more of a boot cut or a straight cut so then you go broad thin and then back out again more of an x shape rather than a triangle shape and um, it's all about proportions um if you've got kind of small legs but you're really kind of broad on top bring the waistband of the trousers up so wear something that's a little bit more high rise will elongate your leg and take the eye away from how broad you are up top and um, little things like that if you're conscious about you know looking wide stay away from horizontal stripes if you're conscious about looking really tall stay away from vertical pinstripes little things like that will go a long way dom almighty asks what age were you when you got your first job so my first job was stacking shelves in a tesco supermarket and i got that job when i was 16 and i absolutely hated it i knew at that moment that i never wanted to work in a supermarket long term it sucked so bad but it was good when I was a kid and I was in school and it was like pocket money that I could go and buy things that I wanted. So everybody's got to start somewhere. Simon says, where do you find, Simon says, where do you find or buy such trousers? So this is a question that I see a lot on my TikTok as well because a lot of my trousers are not what you would typically see off the peg in clothing stores. So when I'm looking for trousers, when I'm searching for trousers, I don't, I don't know what brands stock what well, obviously I know now because I've shopped from them before but when I was looking for them in the first place I would narrow my search down by what I'm actually looking for so if I'm looking for something with like a Gurkha style band uh, then I'll search Gurkha style trousers if I'm looking for something that's high rise or like men's high rise trousers if I'm looking for something with pleats men's pleated trousers if I'm looking for something with like a wide leg men's wide leg trouser and then you can combine those searches and refine them so if you're looking for something that's tweed high rise with a double pleat and a wide leg men's wide leg pleated high rise trousers tweed or whatever like that um these brands are actively looking to sell their product so they're going to use keywords like that that describe the garment uh, for the google seo so just really think about how do I describe these trousers if I was to if I was to say to a blind man what these trousers look like how would I describe them they are brown tweed high rise with a double pleat and a wide leg google that and I guarantee you brands will come up um for brands that I know of from shopping before Thomas Farthing that you see me wear a lot on TikTok um the quality of those trousers and the cut of those trousers are something that I absolutely love. Um, a lot of the other ones that I get made, um, I get made to measure. So I've got a made to measure pair from Hunter Tracy Taylors. I've got a made to measure pair from Moss Bros. I've got a couple of made to measure pairs from Moss Bros. Um, Puro Ego are another really good brand. Um, very affordable brand as well. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Grand de Lamar. I think they're like an Instagram-ish kind of brand that do nice Gurkha style chinos and stuff. Um, Malik Cam. I think they're a Turkish brand. They do some nice stuff. They're not super high rise, which is a shame. They're more like a mid to low rise, but they have the nice style with the, like the extended waistband and the big pleats and stuff. I see lots lots more that I've not bought from, but that's how I find those brands. Uh, obviously like searching social media as well go on to instagram and go to the search bar and type in like um men's italian style trousers men's gurkha style trousers men's pleated trousers or whatever and you'll find like a load of in influencers from all over the world uh, and they're they're always going to tag the brands that they're wearing because they want to work with these brands so that's another way of finding them finn brock first asked how much to swallow my goldfish whole i don't have a goldfish um, and his second question, which is an actual question, 
Um, do you have another job besides TikTok and YouTube? So to touch on this, this again is another question that gets absolutely hockeyed out of it in the TikTok comments. I earn zero money from TikTok. Zero, zilch, nada, nothing. There is no creators fund here in Ireland. I earn no money from TikTok unless it's a paid collaboration, which I don't do any anyways. Not true choice, just that nobody reaches out. I earn no money from TikTok because there's no creators fund here. And on YouTube, I earn no money on YouTube because I can't monetize my videos because I have less than the minimum subscriber rate or whatever it is. So if I go onto my uh, YouTube studio app, I require 4,000 more subscribers before I can monetize my channel. So to answer that question, uh, TikTok and YouTube are not my jobs at all because I earn no money from them. But what my actual job is, this year I launched my own company and um, it's called Rafo. So obviously we have our newsletter, which is subscription based, and then we have actual physical products to, to buy. So we have a range of ties and we've just dropped a couple of pocket squares and a couple of trouser braces or suspenders is what the Americans call them. And we are actively pushing very hard to try get some actual garments, actual clothes. So I want to bring out a couple of polo t-shirts. I want to bring out a couple of shirts and I want to bring out suits, but I want to do it in like a sustainable way. I want to do it in, you know, a way that makes sense. If that makes sense like this, like I always say to people that the fit is key. So if I bring out suits, they will most likely be made to order. Um, for a couple of reasons, I don't have a big warehouse, I don't have access to a warehouse, I don't have the money for a warehouse. The minimum orders in some of these production houses are like 10,000 units. Again, no warehouse, no money for a warehouse. I uh, don't have the money to go and buy 10,000 units of basically the same suits and then try sell that many suits. So made to order makes much more sense. It'll be more expensive, but it'll be more exclusive. And the suits will be not only much better quality, they will be made from like ridiculously high quality cloths. They'll also be full canvas, but they'll be made to order. So it's essentially like the, the whole, like when I wear made to measure trousers on my TikTok, this is essentially the service that I want to provide to you guys. And um, so when you see me wearing a pair of trousers, I can literally make those trousers for you that's the idea so that's what i do for work and um, i run my own company and make all this content alongside that some of these usernames are mental um milfs love ricardo so ricardo asks what would you call how you dress mm. um I don't know what I would actually call my style. Um, maybe just like a classic menswear style. I think that, yeah, classic menswear style. I think that's probably the easiest way to to sum it up. So, Julio, I think that's how you say your name. I'm very sorry if I'm butchering your name. Um, how and when did you become interested in fashion? So I think I was kind of always kind of interested in fashion. Like I remember, you know, wearing my first Holy Communion shoes out to my friends because I wanted to dress like James Bond. And that was what, maybe like eight or nine years old or, or 10 years old, whenever you are, when you make your Holy Communion. My granddad wore a suit every single day for as long as I could remember him, I think, up until he went into hospital and died. He pretty much wore a suit every single day. My dad was in the army and then in the navy, so I think I get somewhat of that like kind of formal side of the, the dress etiquette from him. I remember being in school and being taught how to tie my tie correctly, all those sort of things. So I think those are probably my influences, but I just think when I look back at men's style like over the years I always find myself much more attracted to the style of like the 1920s and the 1940s I think sometimes it can look a bit kind of costumey and um, so I find it really important to kind of like 
run that line very I think I started to find my own style when I was about 24, 25 ish. Um, I think that's when I really started to kind of be like, kind of hone it in and be like, okay, like the tailoring, the suits is, is what I really feel kind of comfortable and confident in. And that's kind of where I want to channel my focus. And then, yeah, just years and years and years of, you know, trying different things, trying different cuts of jackets, different fabrics, saving up money to buy better items, um, things like that, and just learning, just learning, 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 following along with different blogs and different YouTube channels. And then, you know, it's brought me here to where, you know, I'm essentially the person that I would have been following like five plus years ago. Um, I would have been watching my content now and been like, oh, like he's tying his tie this way and he's wearing his trousers this way and looking at things that, you know, I do that I would like. Um, not everything I wear, everybody's going to like, but there's probably one or two things that you can pluck from my style and add to your style and find your own style. PJT Ball asks, let's chat about thrift store charity shops. Uh, what to look for an excellent find. So I really like charity shops. I, like, I think ties are a really easy thing to find in charity shops. And you can find some really beautiful pieces in charity shops. In tomorrow's vlog, do you know what I'll do? I'll actually go to a charity shop tomorrow. In tomorrow's vlog, I'll go into a charity shop and I'll talk about what I'm looking for. Um, and if I find any nice items, I'll talk about how... I can get those items to fit and if it's possible because obviously not everything in a charity shop is just going to fit. Sean Book asks, favourite suit? I think my favourite suit is probably probably my Thomas Farthing wool and cashmere three piece. I think the waistcoat is a little bit short and the trousers aren't as high rise as I wish they were. I think... I don't think that suit is still available on their site. If it is, and the guinea trousers, which are the same as my other Thomas Farthing trousers, if the guinea trousers are in my size from that suit, I think I'm going to buy them simply because they're much higher They're much higher rise than the regular trouser, uh, which means there'll be less of a gap between the waistband and the waistcoat, and that's one of my pet peeves when you can see like a little bit of shirt. In between the waistcoat and the waistband you should see nothing they should be flush although my navy blue double breasted jacket with the gold buttons from moss bros that's not a suit but it's probably my favorite jacket todd soderberg how can i dress like this on a budget so there's two ways of looking at this okay so one of the main benefits of dressing the way I do and that kind of classic style is that it doesn't really go out of fashion. Um, it is what it is and it has been that way pretty much for like a hundred years. There's little things going in our style. Things might get skinnier, things might get wider. Uh, waistbands might get higher, they might get lower, whatever it may be. But overall, the style remains somewhat the same. You know, a certain tie knot, like a full Windsor might be more in... in in style you know 10 20 years ago but now just like a four in hand or a prince albert knot is pretty much to go to for you know every sartorial gentleman in the world so in terms of dressing like that on a budget you can invest in something that's like pretty expensive so let's just get a calculator out now right so if you were to spend a thousand euros or a thousand dollars or a thousand whatever on a suit right, that's a lot of money Right, so that's not so much dressing on a budget, right? But let's say you wear that suit twice a week for the entire year. So you've wore it 104 times for the entire year. It's cost you nine euros and 60 cent per wear. So therefore, that's a good investment because you're wearing it often. If it's a good quality suit, which it should be for a thousand euros, it will last you far beyond a year far beyond a year so let's say you wear it twice a week for an a whole other year it's now cost you 0 0.092 cents per wear 
So do you, do you get where I'm coming from? Like there's some pieces that are worth investing in because they will last a long time. Um, and it's, if you break it down like cost per wear, really think about how often am I going to wear this garment? Like, and that's what you should be thinking when you're looking at investing in a bigger piece. Maybe it's a made to measure suit, maybe it's an overcoat, whatever it may be. And that was on like a thousand euros. So you could get like a really nice overcoat for like 500 euros. You could get a relatively okay suit for like 300 euros. Um, but to start off, I would look at like your basics. So get yourself like a really nice classic pair of like a mid gray flannel trouser. Get a nice classic navy blazer. Get a white Oxford button down shirt and a white dress shirt. Get a blue dress shirt and a blue Oxford button down shirt. Maybe a striped shirt. Get a beige, get a beige polo shirt. Get a navy polo shirt. Get a gray turtleneck. Maybe a moss green turtleneck. Maybe a black turtleneck. Get yourself a chocolate brown pair of shoes and a black pair of shoes and then maybe a suede loafer for something a bit more kind of casual. A couple of ties thrown in, a navy overcoat and that's pretty much the basics. You can literally mix and match all of those items multiple different ways to make essentially an infinite amount of looks. And because like over time people will get to think like, Oh, like that's that's Damien's style. Damien always wears a suit. Nobody ever says like he wore that fucking suit yesterday. Even I could wear the same trousers two days in a row, but change the jacket, change the shirt, drop the shirt out, put a bit of knitwear on, and the whole look looks completely different. So nobody thinks like he wore that yesterday. Because the whole thing looks very different. Even though it's the same. Pasta Daddy asks, what inspired your style? Um I think, and the question before that from Jules GDT asked, when did you start getting interested in fashion? So I've already answered kind of both of those in one. I talked about how my grandfather and my dad kind of influenced my style, how the 1940s influenced my style, and that I started when I was about 23, 25. Jojo Man asks, what's your favorite movie? It is easily between Godfather Part 1 and Part 2 or Goodfellas? Chester Leo asks, what is the best fragrance do you wear or like the most? So what fragrance is my favourite? Um, if you can see hand-like coordination, if you can see there is the Tom Ford Black Orchid. That's probably my current favourite out of what I actually own, but my favourite of kind of all time or favorite that I've ever owned is Aqua di Parma Osmetheos. That stuff is. John Simpson says, A Day in the Life. I think you're requesting a video there. Uh, and that's kind of the idea behind these vlogs is not only to like try to grow my YouTube channel, um, but also to give you lovely folk that follow me across multiple platforms now. Um, a little bit more of an insight into like my day, my life, my thought processes, um, my trying to grow my, my new company. To try to give you essentially not just a single day in the life, but a day in every life of, you know, a, a 31 year old dude that's just launched his own company and is, you know, just trying to navigate through life. Cloggin4 asks, what inspires you to be stylish every day? Uh, trust me, some days it's much harder than, than others, but I always tell myself, the definition of chivalry is a man who expects more from himself than the world expects of him. And I try to live by that mantra and try to dress by that mantra. And that's what inspires me to get dressed. Not only to get dressed, but to try to dress well every day. Favourite outfit you styled? I think there was one, it was either like the 1940s look on TikTok or the one where I announced that the first drop of the ties was live. Either of those outfits I think I really, really liked. Um, Philippe Hernandez asks, how do you grow your style of clothing and be more confident trying different things? So there's some things that 
I feel completely confident doing and some things that I don't feel confident doing. For instance, I'm trying to force myself to make more YouTube content, hence like this here video. But I feel very self-conscious carrying this camera out on the streets and like even holding my phone up to make like an Instagram story or something like that. It's always kind of like down here where it's like, it's not as like noticeable. So like this camera, like my, my camera is is really big. I'll, I'll show you what it looks like while we're recording here. So this is your camera, it's got like a big lens on it. It's got the mic, it's got the, the tripod, it's got the whole nine yards on it. Um. So yeah, like I'm, I'm trying to like break through that kind of confidence barrier and like vlog more and be confident holding, holding my camera and talking to camera in in public when it comes to my clothing. I've never really been self conscious about anything that I've wore or experimenting with other, th like with different styles and different things. Um. Yeah, like I. This is going to sound somewhat contradictory because how I explain my, literally, my unshakable confidence when it comes to how I dress will completely contradict my feelings and insecurities about carrying a, a big camera around and talking to my camera because they should go hand in hand. My opinion on people's opinions on how I dress should be the same opinion on carrying a big camera around. When it comes to how I dress, I really could not give a flying fiddle what anybody thinks as long as i look at it in the mirror and i think that looks cool then i walk out my shoulders are back my chest is out my chin is up and it's a you to the world and i'm gonna wear whatever i want when i want and i don't care what anybody thinks of it that should be my attitude to like vlogging but it's not <laughs> i'm trying to burst through that ceiling and get more confident doing this and tomorrow as i said earlier on I'm gonna go charity shopping and I'm gonna bring this with me as like a vlog and the charity shopping can be the vehicle to press my anxieties around people staring at me talking to a camera. But look, is what it is. I think how I how I grow my style is just experiment with different things and listen to people that are more experienced than me. Like the first time I ever went to get like a suit tailored, I was told that for my body type and my body shape I should wear something that's a little bit more high rise and now i pretty much wear exclusively high rise trousers uh, because not only do they fit me better not only are they more comfortable but i think they're more flattering to how i to how i look my actual body shape so yeah i think i'm going to take my own advice the advice i'm going to give you i'm going to take that advice on board for me when it comes to vlogging nobody cares Nobody cares if I walk down the street and I'm like talking to my camera or if I'm wearing a full on Peaky Blinders looking suit or whatever else. Nobody really cares. And anybody that do cares, they can pass judgment, whether that be good or bad. And most of the time I get more compliments than I do anything else. So, yeah, I think just do what you love. Do what makes you happy and wear what makes you happy and confident. I think that's what's the most important thing. Matthew asks, favorite piece of Thomas Farthing clothing you own? So as I said, my favorite suit is that Thomas Farthing suit. I really like the jacket off of that suit with the peak lapels and the belt and the pleats on the back. I think it's a beautiful piece. But I, I would have to say it's either between my lamb's wool cardigan or the herringbone tweed guinea trousers. I love those trousers. I love how they fit. I love how the waistband sits really nice and high, the big double pleats, the wide leg. I love those trousers. I love how they feel. I love how they look. And anytime I wear them trousers out in public, I always get compliments on them. Always. MC Derek, where do you buy your clothes? When somebody asked about the trousers, I kind of talked about my thought process on looking for clothes it's more about using the keywords that describe the garment and then finding brands that way so i think that answers that question as well i don't know how to say that name is that michael michael burt 341 vlog as i said i'm trying to vlog i'm trying to make this an actual vlog where i'm like walking down the streets going about my day to day talking to the camera and like trying to tell like a story and bring you guys along for like a, a, a day today and yeah, I'm trying.
Trust me, I'm trying. The J Luna. Some of your hobbies. So other than fashion, which is more of a job than a hobby now, but still a hobby because I still enjoy it. I still enjoy getting dressed every day. Otherwise, I wouldn't make those TikToks because as I said, I earn zero money from TikTok. So I wouldn't be making them if I didn't enjoy them. But photography is probably my biggest hobby i love the outdoors i love going camping i love finding like cabins and little tiny homes on airbnb and i like going and staying in them and having little to no internet access i love waking up in a tent um and yeah i love photography i love going to a new city i love seeing new places i love meeting new people i think that's how we learn and grow as as humans is by you know, talking to other people from other cultures, from other backgrounds and listening to their stories and, and telling your own. I think that's, I think they're my biggest hobbies. I don't really play any music, but I like music a lot. I like listening to music. I like singing. I like playing the drums. I don't own a drum kit. I would love a drum kit, but I don't own one. Um. Yeah, I think they're my, my biggest hobbies. I think like fashion, tattoos, cars, Photography, travel, waking up in a tent in the middle of nowhere, cooking food over an open fire. Unreal. Edu asks, what's your most expensive watch? It's going to be one of the Raymond Veal watches, although I didn't actually buy them. Um, so like on my TikTok, if you go to the watch playlist, the very first video on that playlist is a watch video about the Raymond Veal uh, Percival which is like a 1500 euros to 2000 euro watch and then I have a Raymond Veal Maestro Moon Phase which is like a two and a half thousand euro watch and um, so either one of them are going to be my, like the most expensive watches that I own although I didn't actually buy them I was an ambassador for Raymond Veal so you can see like on the back of Top Gear magazine not only is that me wearing the watch, I actually took those photos as well. Yeah, I got those watches as part of being an ambassador, but they're the most expensive watches that I own. And then the most expensive watch that I actually bought is probably my 63 Omega Geneve, which I got as a 30th birthday present. That's between three and 500 euros, so not super expensive. Where are some of the most stylish cities you've been around the world? In London, Paris, and Rome. Smiley Bride, are you still doing the tattoo apprenticeship? Yes. The only issue is, is that right now, as I mentioned earlier on in this video, I'm really suffering with kind of my mental health and like trying to push myself out that front door because my skin looks like absolute fucking shit. Um, and the other reason why I've, I've not been like speaking about it or there as much is because I'm trying to get my company off the ground I'm trying to like get onto suppliers so we can like get restock of, of toys I'm like chasing um, packaging the production of the packaging I'm chasing that to make sure that that gets here you know on time so we can reach our deadline to get all of the pre-orders out and to the customers by Christmas time which we're on track but I need to be like cracking the whip to make sure that we stay on track. Um, and then as I said earlier on, I'm trying to expand the like the range into like actual garments, into like polo t-shirts and dress shirts, and then into like made to order and made to measure suiting. So that's that takes up so much time. You would not believe how much time that actually takes up. Tattooing is a huge passion of mine, and I really wanna do it. But the tattoo apprenticeship is unpaid so it's all on my own time and i need to be earning money so my business is a viable way of me earning money doing something that i love and it's also a viable way for me to like utilize the platform that i've built on social media on tiktok tiktok is now over six hundred thousand people so and um, if i can provide a product that even a percentage of those followers want to buy um, then I'm doing a good job Sam asks how long did it take you to really find your style I'm sure it took a lot of trial and error I would say it honestly took me three 
three plus years and I think I'm still finding it I still find new things that I like I'm still kind of experimenting and pushing myself and learning different things and learning what I like and learning what I don't like um, but I would say easily three years and trust me there's like many many mistakes that I've learned along the way so when someone asks me about like an Aldridge knot and the reason I fucking shit on that knot is because I tried it way back in the day and when I look at those photos now like six plus years down the line I just cringe so hard because it's so tacky so yeah take my advice when i give it to you because trust me i've been there i've done that wore the t-shirt look back at the photos and cringe internally forever b williamson asks who has the best fashion in music i think um what's that guy's name alex turner from arctic monkeys has really good style but i think giving the name i think harry styles has really unique style i don't like his on stage style but i like his style when he's like you know doing press things like if he's on tv shows or if he's going to like movie premieres and stuff like that i really like his style i think it's quite unique and i think it's i think it's him i think it's what he really enjoys wearing i think even come to the end of his one direction days when he was like doing that like ysl kind of uh, style like lots of black skinny jeans chelsea boots um cuban heels his long hair i think that was like him starting to like branch out and experiment into his style and i think now we see him really gonna come into himself and into his own and be wearing what he really wants to be wearing um which i love some of it isn't particularly for me i wouldn't wear a lot of it myself i'd wear i'd definitely wear some of it but i wouldn't wear a lot of it myself but i love seeing somebody express themselves through their style through their fashion so david winter asks what made you choose to show clothing on social media so there was no kind of conscious decision to be like one day wake up and be like okay i'm gonna try be an influencer i'm gonna go and create all this content to put it out there and try gain a following like that's literally not what happened like when instagram first came about everybody was just posting pictures of like their food and their dog and the, like nobody really knew how to kind of use the app um and i was working in retail at the time and would always kind of like wear a, like a shirt and tie and a v-neck jumper and so that I always kind of really liked men's style and that was kind of like the very early stages of me kind of finding my style and dressing in a more formal way and I was just like just posting on on Instagram this is before Instagram even had stories or anything like that I was just posting on Instagram just been like no hashtags basically no caption just been like outfit of the day and I was just doing that and then again like 1500 followers or something like that like really small numbers early on especially in comparison to now and then like i didn't even know what an influencer was when i was doing that like that's just what i was doing and then i kind of got known for kind of like my style and then as it grew i started like brands started reaching out to me as my following kind of grew um and i, I would have been like known as like a micro influencer um brands started reaching out wanting to work with me wanting to create content for them or like they were sending me clothes to wear in my in my daily outfits and stuff like that um and then when it came to tiktok like like everybody else i downloaded tiktok during lockdown and i had no idea how to use the platform like my background is in photography um and this is all video based but i knew that if i wanted to continue having any sort of social platform if i wanted to grow on social media i needed to make that move into video um and i wasn't really sure how to do that so the first videos that i made um on tiktok it's not there's no talking it's like me clicking my fingers into transitions and it's like over music or whatever because i, I wasn't really confident enough to like speak and then I think I made a couple of videos on like uh, on football, I think, and that was the first time that I spoke on the app. Um, and then I made a couple of videos on tattoos because I was just like, right, if I'm gonna speak about something, although like I know how to speak about fashion, like tattoos is something a little easier to speak about for me, anyways. 
Um, and then a couple of those tattoo videos performed really well. Um, and I started to gain a little bit of a following from that. And then I was just like, okay, so this is the tr this is the trick. Like I need to show more of my personality. I need to speak on camera. Um, and then, yeah, it was just a natural like progression from the tattoo videos into the fashion videos because fashion is what I've always been interested in. And even if you look back on the tattoo videos, in some of them I'm wearing like a full suit and a flat cap, even though I'm I'm not talking about style at all. I'm where I'm talking about tattoos. Um, where the transition from tattoo videos to style videos came from was literally time. Um, I had no time to research and like the amount of research that those tattoo videos were like the amount of research that was involved in doing those tattoo videos like cross-referencing tons of different blogs and tattoo artists websites and tattoo magazines all the sort of stuff to make sure that i wasn't just talking absolute shit um it was just taking like so much time it would take days just to gather all the information just to sit down and make like a three minute video or something like that so the whole let's get dressed um videos i was always doing fashion content anyway so it's just like this is just an easy win like i'm getting dressed every day anyway so let's just document the getting dressed part um so yeah they were obviously a lot slower i was talking in depth about the the pieces i was like these are a pair of high rise double pleated made to measure trousers from brand x this is a short from brand x this is a made to measure jacket from brand x in cloth xyz blah blah blah, blah. i was really talking in depth about each individual garment and then again it was just one day i was just like man i really could not be arsed like making a video and spending like five minutes talking about every single item and then having to like import all that footage onto my computer and then spend like an hour or two like editing it, editing it all down and taking out all the m's and hums and gaps and everything else like that so then i just went trousers shirt shoe watch fragrance jacket done and those videos performed much better than any videos that I've ever done before. I think it's because they were just short and sweet and to the point. Um, and I think that's how I've kind of like found my little niche on, on TikTok is I think my style is somewhat unique. Um, I don't see many other people on the platform dressing the way I dress. I think um, I get tagged in a lot of people's videos people saying that people are copying off me or people say that I'm copying off other other people I think I didn't invent getting dressed and nobody else did either I've been doing fashion content for well over 10 years um, and it was a natural progression as I said I didn't wake up one morning and be like oh I'm going to be an influencer today and um, it was just it was just something that just slowly happened over time and yeah, I think there's space for everybody on the internet. The internet is an infinitely big place. And as long as you're bringing something unique to the table, I think there's a space for you. Um, as I said, I think my style and how I dress is somewhat unique to me. And even the manner in which I make, in which I make my videos, I think are somewhat unique to me. I've kind of found like my, my formula, my template of, you know, keeping it short and sweet and even the order in which I put the items on is pretty much the same in every video um, and I think that helps. I hope that answers that question. Silly Silly Sibbent 777 asks can you do fall style but a little bit more casual? I think yesterday's TikTok outfit is a very autumnal casual look it's like jeans flannels and a pair of boots i don't think it gets much more casual autumnal than that okay i'm gonna leave the questions there i've not really left the house all day other than like popping to the shop very briefly for a bit of lunch but looking outside now the sun is really low looks really pretty so i'm gonna go for a walk in the park just to get my ass outside of this house even for like five minutes let's uh let's get it open. 